did for good reasons between the congressional package and what the Fed has been doing since Tuesday last week. We have averted for now what was the real risk of an accelerating economic and financial deleveraging. And at the end of that road would have been a 1930s-like depression and a 2008-like financial disruption. So, so the good news is that for now we have averted that. The less good news is we have a very tough economic and financial road ahead of us. The stimulus isn't going to be effective immediately. You need to build pipes. There will be massive layoffs. There will be bankruptcies. So we're not out of the woods, but at least we're not on the path to something really nasty. Because of that, Sarah, I think this is an up-in-quality opportunity rather than an all-clear situation. And what do I mean by that? If you're a bond investor, look very carefully at what you hold, reduce exposures with weak balance sheets, and shadow the Fed. The Fed has established a path for you in higher quality bonds and follow that. And if you're an equity investor, really look at balance sheets because the risk of things going wrong here are quite high. Josh Brown, uh, I feel like you echoed a sen similar sentiment earlier to say the worst is, is not behind us yet. But are there some strong balance sheet uh, companies, to, to Mohammed's point, that you have been comfortable enough buying in the last couple of weeks? Well, I've, I've, I've bought uh, the king of strong balance sheet companies, which is Berkshire Hathaway and some other stuff. But I think Mohammed's right. And um, one thing that I've been saying with its clients pretty consistently is that we already know for a fact that the news will get worse. Um, but the good news is the, the, the ability of that news to shock us will diminish over time. And that's true of every crisis. I understand there are aspects of this that are different because it's more than financial. It's life and death. I understand all that. But the ability of the news to shock us, we also know, will diminish. Um, however, we haven't even seen the news yet. Yeah, we've gotten earnings warnings, but keep in mind, this quarter is closing, and we're going to start seeing the actual reports in a couple of weeks. Additionally, on April 3rd, we're going to get March unemployment. We know it's going to be bad. Do we know how bad? Um, and so, like, these are the things that I think we need to think about when we see the Dow mm -hmm. up 2,000 points yesterday and then 1,000 points today. This urge to feel like, oh, my God, I have to be part of it. You've got to calm yourself down. You've got to calm yourself down because we have not seen the peak of infections in New York City, probably not California, maybe not even Washington. Let's slow down. Let's slow down. So that's my message to people. I understand the news will be bad. Get used to that. But also understand at a certain point, we're not going to fall off our chair every time somebody files for bankruptcy. We're not there yet, though. I still think it's early. Yeah, and at, at the current juncture right now, Mohammed, what we're teeing off of is every headline from Washington. They still can't pass this stimulus or relief bill, whatever you want to call it. Senator Sanders with some opposition, but also three GOP senators also uh, don't like the jobless benefit sort of provision in there. How much is this going to do, this bill, whatever form it takes, to alleviate some of the pain out there in terms of unemployment and the economic damage that we're about to see? It's a very important step, Sarah, and I think it will be passed. We're going through something similar to what we saw with TARP. Um, but it's important, and I'm glad you bring it up, to, to understand what it will do and what it cannot do. When the pipes are built, and that's an important qualification, it will provide major relief to the most vulnerable segments of the population, to certain companies, and it will help the Fed in battling market failures. All three things are really important. But it's about protection, really. It's about damage containment. What it cannot do is restart economic activity. For that, it's about containing and, and identifying the spread of the virus. It's about increasing immunity, and it's about better treatment of illness. That is what it takes. And until we get there, the most that the Fed and other government agencies can do is try to contain the damage. And it's not easy. They're going to be building the infrastructure as they try to get the money 
to people and to companies, and that's not an easy task, let alone all the trade-offs that are going to emerge where very delicate balances are going to have to be made.